That's a, one positive way of looking at it, I guess. It was a, a miserable weekend for Wales on the pitch, and it's been another pretty miserable week uh, off the pitch for rugby in Wales as well. We've already talked at length about the damaging claims of sexism and misogyny. This week, it's all been about the threatened strike action, the ongoing contract wrangling. Uh, and, Tom, this week, you know, we've seen players struggling to get mortgages, heard of players on antidepressants. There are 70 players out of contract, careers at stake, livelihoods at stake. How have we come to this? I'm bemused by the strategy. What is Welsh Rugby's strategy? Is it is the union, does it, does it purely want these regional teams just to produce players so they can play at the top of the game, which we've seen? But we've become unstuck now because the, team, the Welsh team hasn't really been performing and we start to look at why. Um, do we want to see competitive regional teams? Because I think over the last couple of years, we've finished right down the bottom. You can see where the league is now, where it finished last time. I don't know. I mean, we're not seeing competitive enough games. We, we get glimpses, I think, of, of teams and we get periods where they do perform. You know, for instance, you know, Cardiff had a good period in the second quarter of the season. The Ospreys, you know, they, they perform well. Montpellier, home and away. Leicester, then they got hammered yesterday against Munster. So I'm not sure what the strategy is. And the deal that's on the table is asking the four regions to perform with less money, um, which for me is... Like, what are we meant to do? What, are, what is the Welsh Rugby Union, um, the regions, meant to do? Because they can't perform on, on what it is right now. To perform on less isn't the way forward. Is it less teams? That, that has to be an answer soon, because I can see why the players are striking, mm -hmm. because you, you need contracts. But maybe not strike for this game because of what it will do to the Welsh economy, not just the union, it's impactful for the union. But it's the Welsh economy, it's the restaurants, it's, it's the bars, it's the mm -hmm. shops that have gone through COVID, have put this in their budget of the biggest weekend in rugby. So it's not just affecting the unit, it's affecting the economy. Uh, Wayne, I'm fascinated to get your thoughts on this. You've been here for nine years in Wales now, you're a naturalised Welshman. You've been on the club side of the divide, you've been on the national coach side of the divide. Uh, Alan Wynne Jones said this week that striking was the nuclear option, it was the very last resort. Do you think if their demands aren't met by Wednesday, the, the deadline they've set, they will go ahead. And, and if so, do you think it actually might be an act of self-harm? Well, look, I think um, it is definitely a last resort, obviously. I think there's not a player there that doesn't want to play the Test match against England. You know, players, it's, it's about caps representing their country, the pride they get in doing that. Uh, it's money that goes with that as well. And uh, so uh, strike action for me is, is the last resort, clearly. But... I can't see it happening because if we do that, as Tom alluded to, you know, it's going to hurt a lot of people financially and, and none more so than the clubs because, you know, the union at the moment is, is pouring a lot of money into the clubs and has done for a long time. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an issue that's been going on since I've been here. So it's not one that's just happened overnight. But certainly I feel for the players. I've been in there. Um, it, it, it's nothing new, put it this way, to be discussing contracts in, in uh, competition. Yeah, there's a huge amount of public sympathy for the players, Chris, but I suppose the bare facts, as the boys have alluded to, is that £6 million come flooding into the coffers when England come to town against Wales. That's money that ultimately yeah. trickles down and, and funds the game at all levels, community and professional. As someone who's an administrator, an ex-player, a, a pundit, how are you looking on at this? In, in horror or in sympathy? In sympathy for everybody, really. I, I think it's a really difficult situation for, for the players. It's a difficult situation for the the fans, the supporters, the Welsh Rugby Union, the regions, everyone, because there's not an easy solution. It's very difficult. Financially, the, the world is in a, a difficult place. Sport's in a difficult place. Uh, but, you know, as an outsider looking in, I don't know if it, how true it is, but I, I assume that the, the, the game of rugby in Wales was thriving. I thought every club would be bursting with kids, boys and girls playing, desperate to play. That's what we think from the outside looking in, that there's so many players desperate to play, but actually at the performance level and the region level, maybe four teams is, is too many, I don't know. Obviously there's, there's, there's big squads as well, perhaps the squads can be smaller, but we went through it in Scotland and initially there was four professional teams, it went to two, it went to three, and it's you know, now really competitive with two. When I started playing at first, and well, I think there was five. The Celtic Warriors were part of it as well. So it's really there's a really difficult situation. There's good people on both sides. I just hope that there's a there's a solution that can be found, and, and a big decisions made as quick as by possible. Wednesday. Find <laughs> by Wednesday. Well, by Wednesday. <laughs> well, by Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the, the three things they want by Wednesday. Not not an overall uh, resolution, but essentially getting rid of the 60 cap rule, having a a voice on the board, and getting rid of this fixed variable element, which we probably have not got time to get into today. But, but Tom, on that point from 
from Chris. The, the union did put out a statement this week saying that ultimately the budgets weren't going to change. They weren't going to get bigger. So we are probably going back to this conversation, aren't we, of cutting or merging regions. Is that still a possibility, do you think? If the regions agree to, to the deal on the table, which is around two, two and a half million less than they're already on, then they'll live to fight another day. But they're not going to be competitive. We're not going to be competitive. We, I really want to see Welsh rugby be competitive in the URC. We are a little bit in Europe. Um, we've had some good wins, but every year I want to see us at the top of the table. At the moment, we're not. So what other option are there? We could lower the teams to two or three, maybe, um, and then try and get the Premiership below a real competitive league where that becomes then a feeder for the, the two super teams or the three super teams in this league rather than relying on the academies. We make that league smaller and we make it more competitive and we make it a better standard. And then the players coming through that and in feeding into these other teams will be better players for it. Or the, the W has to find more money to support four teams because at the current deal... Which they said they're not going to. Yeah, which they said they're not going to. But the current deal will not work with four teams. So they're the three options, really, they have to take. And whether or not they're stalling, we're stalling to try and wait for some region to go into administration or not, we're not quite sure. But at the moment, with the funding that is going on, it doesn't work with four teams. We will have this debate ongoing for, for weeks and months to come. Wayne, take me inside that dressing room, though, because, you know, this has been happening, as you said, not just in the last couple of weeks, but for most of the time you've been here, this constant wrangling between the regions and the union over contracts and the way pay, players are paid. A lot of people have understandably made the correlation between performances on the pitch and what's going on off the pitch. We saw the Ospreys get hammered by Munster last night. Wales have been beaten heavily twice in the opening two rounds of the Six Nations. It's bound to have an effect on these players' morale, doesn't it? Well, I think it's not just players, it's, it's uh, coaches and, and management as well because, you know, preparation's everything. Um, I think you get your preparation right, you give yourself a good opportunity to play well on, on a given weekend and if the preparation is not great because you've got uh, distractions or meetings happening in camps, those sorts of things going on, it can be a distraction. You can look back on weeks and say, we didn't train that well and then the performance wasn't that great on the weekend. You know, players have all their best interests at heart. They, you know, they want to train hard. They want to play well on a weekend. They want to win matches. No one goes out to lose a match. And uh, but sometimes these things are a distraction. You know, at, at the cutting edge of the game now, Test match level, it's only one or two mistakes can cost you a game. And you know, sometimes you look at games, you think those are some pretty basic errors. And you just do wonder at times, you know, how was the preparation and, and what affected that preparation? Wait, you've been obviously a coach here and a coach at a national team. And it might be difficult for you, you to, to answer this question, but is this, can this be fixed short term, do you think? Or is this going to be an ongoing issue that we're just going to be talking over in six months' time, in a year time? Is the relationship between players, between clubs, PRB and the WIU, is it broken? Can it be fixed at all? Well, it can be fixed and it has to be fixed for, for Welsh rugby's sake. Uh, look, it's, as I say, I've been here coming up nine years and there's been uh, issues right throughout that period. Um, there's always a talk around clubs and Chris was talking around what uh, Scotland have done in the past and look, ultimately you've got a certain pool of money it can only go so far it's spread thinly over four you do three you know I had a view back in 2017 around the merger between the Ospreys and the Scarlet so I thought that was going to be a great thing for Welsh rugby and then bring North Wales and that was a personal view but look it, it wasn't to be it was very very close but again that was a bit of controversy at the time as well it was in the middle of a, a six nations so these things are out there they're it's challenging for the players, it's challenging for the staff, but something obviously has to be done very, very quickly. If you're looking from the outside, do you think it is, it is easier if clubs have more control over, over the players in terms of what they're signing them for? Because the NS38 players, you know, that they were agreed wages with the WRU. Do you think it, it is better for Welsh rugby if contracts and, and values of players are decided by clubs? Well, I think as long as everyone's working together for the same outcome, and that's got to be player wellbeing. What we don't want to have is test players playing 30 games a year, you know, because it's going to shorten your career. Uh, and you've got to think about, you know, looking after your players. So the clubs have obviously a job to do and get results, and they want their best players on the pitch. The fans want them on the pitch. The sponsors want them on the pitch. But I think you've got to understand that, you know, you can only play it. The game is so brutal these days with the, the contacts that you can only play, and then there is trainings on top of that, yeah. so many times a year. And I think that's where we probably have had disagreements in the past.